Hello everyone, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'd like to show you how to create heavy duty mixed media art journal by yourself. The reason I'm creating one for myself is because I couldn't find one that I wanted here where I live. The paper is either not thick enough or the journals too small or they are spiral bound like this one. And with journals like these, I have problem when I'm working. I like to work on both sides. Okay. And what is really great about this technique is that it only involves gluing. So no sewing required whatsoever. No need to sew the signatures. And I just want to say, first time I've seen this technique, I've seen it a few years ago on a channel which belongs to a mixed media artist whose name I'm sorry but I don't know how to pronounce so I'm just going to put it up on the screen so you're welcome to go and check it out she's a mixed media artist and in one of her videos she showed how to make an art journal using back-to-back -back method I'm going to take it a little bit further today and I'm going to do a cover as well I will try and find the link to that specific video so that you can go and check that out as well Okay, so I want to have a journal this size, seven and a half by ten and a half inches. What I don't like about this one is the spiral bounding. It's in the way when you're drawing. You're forced to do just one page. I like to work on the both pages. So, although I bought this one, I don't know why. If I'm not going to use it, <laughs> maybe I'll just give it to someone as a present. Although the paper is really nice. I'm going to make one that is more like this. So when I open this up, I want to have that, okay? Flat surface. So I'm going to show you how to do that and it's so easy. You won't believe it's just really easy. So first you'll need some glue. I used glue stick and I used a little bit of white glue. You'll need paper. You decide what size of the journal you want to make. I had this paper. This is... I think it is 11 is it a, a little bit less 10 and 3 quarters by almost 15 inches okay so when I fold it in half it is I think a little bit bigger than this journal and that's perfect for me okay this paper is 165 GSM and for me to use it as as it is like that for a mixed media journal if I'm going to use acrylics if I'm going to put some texture paste and gesso this is going to start warping and it's going to be too fragile so this is actually perfect for this method because when I glue these two together I will end up with a paper that is 330 GSM you know it's going to be double thickness of this and that's going to be perfect for what I want this journal to use for. You'll also need to see, you'll need some either several layers of cardstock or some chipboard for the covers. Okay. And you'll need some fabric for the spine and some fabric for the outside. This is how we start. To save us some time, I already completed most of my text block but this is how I did it I took a sheet of paper and just simply fold it in half okay. then you do the same with the other one so this is what you do you basically glue the outer sides of these papers together that's why it is called back to back so let's just do that so you apply the glue and I use just glue stick and you put decent amount for the whole book I used one glue stick actually there's a little bit left here so it's it's about one glue stick for this size book and I think I have about 30 pages here okay and another thing I did I put a little bit of white glue just around the edges okay because these are going to be the stress points 
so especially here where the spine is and I also put a little bit like this here the reason I'm doing this apart from making it stronger is also because it's much easier to slide the pages over this glue than on the glue stick <laughs> uh, you know if you know what I mean it doesn't dry as fast and then you can maneuver this until it's in the right spot okay and then you just use your glue spray tool and this is how you actually do the whole journal you fold all the papers and then you join the outer pages with glue so here I have that and then I have that and then you do another one so let's just join it to this one okay I'll add it to this one so that was my last one so I need to add glue here on the outer page and I don't know it took me about half an hour to glue this all down so it wasn't that bad I thought it was going to be more time needed but it wasn't actually get a big glue stick and going to be all right and you just go around and a little bit over the top so you make sure that that's right and then you put that thing that we just do together over this Again, align everything because you use some of the liquid glue it will give you enough time to maneuver the pages don't put the nail polish on just before you start doing this because you'll end up with the nail polish streaks like me but that page is going to be on the inside so it doesn't really matter so here I am my text block is ready and I'll show you I've done this last night and then I put this under a heavy book and it really flattened so it looks really good now okay and look the papers are really glued together and they're so thick so they're now 330 GSM rather than 165 and I think I'm going to enjoy working in this one so much all right so that that's that now this one step that I want to do before I glue everything down is just to add a bit of fabric over the spine and I'm going to use this recycled coffee bag <laughs> I think it's a coffee bag Okay, and I'll just cut it back that much. So I'm going to just fold this on the inside. Actually, glue stick won't do, so I'll just add a little bit of white glue. just trying to see and some here okay and now I'm going to apply the glue here You know, this is just so that it doesn't um, start opening up on this end 
once I add a lot of things and I'll keep working, you know how pages get really thick. So I think it's a good idea to do this. I haven't tried the version without it. Perhaps it might work, but I just don't want to risk it. That's why I'm not going to tell you to skip this step. bit more here that's all right so we can leave this to just dry while we prepare the, the cover okay let this dry and I already measured my spine and I cut a piece of this chipboard exactly the same as the spine. Okay, so once you complete your text block and you decide how thick you want it and how many pages you want, then you take this measurement and then you cut yourself a piece of chipboard that is exactly as your spine, but you leave a little bit on each end. You see, with regular binding, you always have the, the pages are a little bit smaller than the cover, okay? And that's just to keep your pages um, from getting damaged. Okay, so I cut myself that. And I also cut myself two pieces of chipboard that are, again, like they are. You, you line them up on one end. Line them up here, but then you leave also a little bit on each side. I hope you can see. Okay, so that's probably like five, what is it? four millimeters three four millimeters two millimeters you know it's up to you it doesn't have to be exactly but you leave a little bit more than you would have the papers i used a recycled chipboard this was part of another book i think that was a sample book and i stripped everything off and i just used that chipboard I also have some sample fabric that I was given a few years ago. It's a microfiber. It's like full suede. And I think I only need half of it. So I'm just going to cut it. Let's see, I might have to cut this bit off. There's some um, hot glue here and I don't like that. So I'm going to just see how much space. Yeah, I think I can get away cutting that. I really should cut that. should be all right. 
Now we also need to leave some space here in between. And we need to leave, let's say at least double the thickness of that. But I'm going to tell you exactly how much I'm going to leave. This is one quarter of an inch. Okay, so a quarter of an inch in between, and you, you need to line them up. Put a line here. for my own, you know, like the eyes sometimes playing tricks on my mind, so I need to have these lines ready, just so I know. So now all we need to do is glue this down. So, yeah, you can use uh, white glue, you can use uh, Aston-based glue, it's totally up to you. I'm going to use Aston-based glue simply because it dries almost instantly. So. The smell is horrendous, but <laughs> it just works really fast. fabric that I'm using is quite thick. I don't think this will seep through but I want to spread it because it's going to adhere better. It's already drying just so far. something to put here to make sure when I do this one it doesn't move so I'm going to I'll just put this box okay now let's move this one down okay We need to add this one. soaks all the blue.
So sometimes I do the corners like this, I fold and then I cut. Or you can just do that. Make sure you leave some here. Do like we normally do when we make covers. We've done this a few times now, I think. So I'll just do the longer sides first. Spread the glue, add a little bit here, add some there. Just fold over. And try not to get the glue on the outside of the fabric like I did here. And I think I'm just making it worse. quickly that dries. Now do the corners. Now here we should do that first. So we'll just add a little bit. I hope you can see that what it should look like. Then we're going to cut a little bit. It all depends on the fabric. It's stick like this one you need to cut. So it's not so bulky.
now let's do the same on this side. Wow, I think it looks really nice. Okay, let's just test. What a gorgeous book. Now, I really don't want my book to be just black like this. I want to put something on the front and I need to do that before I glue this paper to here because that's all you need you know you glue this fabric and then you glue this paper on this side and on that side and that would be done but before I do that I want to do something fun with the front and the back and what I've decided to do is use my master board from the second episode of creative mojo cards the one that was about japan and i think that would be awesome on the front and now i'm gonna use that one on the back this was a master board that's what it looked like no i took a photo and i created like a like a little digital it's free for you to download on my website along with some Japanese writing and if you want to use in your project. Before I glue it down, I was thinking of maybe of maybe just adding a little bit of gold around. So let's see if that's going to show. Yeah, so I'm just using antique gold. I think it will stand out a little bit better against the black i've painted the, the the ends with black but um black on black sort of doesn't really stand out so i think this gold wax paste is going to be better also after i cut this down in two pieces i used matte acrylic varnish on top to secure everything i don't want anything falling off i don't think it will but yeah. yeah i think it looks so much better with the gold so i'm gonna do this over here them down I'll keep the book like this make sure nothing sticks out something like that oh I love it okay and I'll just use again just this glue. Now I'm going to actually, after I glue this down, I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine because I just like that look. But you don't have to do that, obviously. Whatever you decide to put, if you decide to put anything on the front cover, you can just glue it down. really no need for sewing unless you want to and this glue is just just to hold it in place while I do the sewing
got a little bit of gold here on the cover, which is fine. I might actually add more just to grind it up a little bit. Wow, I really like it. It's going to be so inspirational. And I love the thickness of it, so I need to glue this one down as well. go to my sewing machine and I will be back. Okay, that is it. Um, I couldn't do these here because that space between the needle and the machine part where the motor is, is not wide enough. It only comes to about here. So I only did the stitching around and I left this as it is. Okay, it went quite well considering the thickness, but um, it did skip a few stitches here, I think. But that's all right, I will think about what to add there. Okay, maybe I'll just add something, and even here over the spine, just to make sure this doesn't lift off. Maybe I'll add some lace or something, I don't know, I'll think about it. But so far, that is good as it is. So now all we need to do is glue these down. So, and for this, again, I'll just use, what should, glue should I use? I'll just use the same glue, fast drying one. Okay, so I'll first glue the fabric Slide it like this till it gets to the end. Make sure it's in the middle. So we don't glue the spine to this, only these flaps. So 
now the last thing that we need to do is glue this paper to that and just add a bit more glue here make sure that is glued properly cardstock and this paper that's easily glued with just the glue stick so i'm going to add the glue stick in the middle and then i'm going to use this First, just a little bit more glue here and here. same way we did here. Glue stick in the middle. I need to fold this, get a better flow. in love with this book already <laughs> it's gorgeous love it if i wanted to i can put some lace or something over that side to make sure that is not lifting off i also found some of these wouldn't that look good something like that on in the corners but i only have two so i'd have to get more for the other side or this this is a possibility as well Yeah, I prefer these. Yeah, something like that would, I think, definitely look good. But I'll think about that later on. But I just want to show you how this opens up. Look, and it stays flat even here in the middle. It stays flat no matter where you open it, it stays flat. it looks like when you open it flat i absolutely love it it's going to be such a pleasure working in this journal and the pages are thick 
as cardstock. So I can use gesso, I can use texture paste, watercolors, glue things on. It's absolutely wonderful for that. And it was very easy to do, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it gave you some ideas of how you can make your own heavy duty mixed media art journal. And I can't wait to start using this one, perhaps in one of the next videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you soon. Bye for now.